Now here we are with a chapter which everybody likes. Okay, just kidding. It is a chapter which nobody likes, but I'm sure not all of you are like that. Now, accessible trading income chapter. Now, one main issue the students face is what are we doing in this chapter? A lot of dates here and there. So let me tell you what we're doing. We are actually using this chapter for sole traders, sole traders or businessmen. Okay, we're using it for sole traders or businessmen. That is, they have their accounting periods. Yeah, in different time periods, like. I'm not talking about employment or property income, or anything like that. I'm talking about trading income, you know, sole traders and all that. So what happens is for them, their profits, they do, use, do it as per account period, year ended 31st March, year ended 30th September. You know, different, comp, uh, different uh, businesses have different accounting periods, right? So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to link the accounting period to the tax year. That is the main thing that we're doing in this chapter, accessible trading income. So what's the whole point of this chapter? We are linking two things, which is the accounting period, Okay, we are linking two things, which is the accounting period and the tax year. These two things we are actually trying to link. So what links this? Okay, something that links the accounting period to the tax year is called the basis period. So that is the meaning of basis period. Okay, whatever links this accounting period to the tax year is the basis period. All right. Okay. Now let's look about look at this C by B. What is C by B? C by B means current year basis. What are the meaning? First of all, let's try to understand what is current year basis. Okay. So before I tell you what is current year basis, now normally what happens is for all businesses, we use C by B. Like to see, like you're doing business, you prepared your SOP, and you want to know in which tax year to show. So what you do is you use CYB. What is CYB? CYB means we take a look at the account period and see the last date in which tax it falls, that tax. For example, here I've given some examples. Year under 31, 12, 2017 means tax year 17, 18. Year under 39, 18 means tax year 18, 19. Whichever uh, tax year that last date falls in, we'll show in that entire tax year, which means the profit for year under 31, 12, 17, you'll show in the tax year 2017, 18. And the profit for tax year under 39, you'll show in 2018, 19. Okay, this is usually the rule we use for all cases, except for two cases. What are those two cases? Opening years and closing years of business. Opening years and closing years of business. Opening years and closing years of business. All right, opening years and closing years of business. In these two cases, we don't apply CYB. For the opening years, we are learning the first three tax years. And for the closing year, the last year rule we are studying in this chapter. All right, so now you're understanding the whole point, right? What is the whole point of all these dates? Okay, so opening first three tax years, we are basically studying the basis period rules. We're going to study the basis period rules. So for the first tax year, the basis period, what is the first, what is the, what is the rule for that first tax year? For the first tax year, the basis period is, let's take a look at what the basis period is. The basis period, okay? The basis period runs from start of trade, yeah? Start of trade start of trade till coming 5th April, okay, coming 5th April. There are numerous examples in your handouts. The very first question is with dealing with this start of trade till the coming 5th April. That is the first tax year rule. First tax year rule basis period is start of trade till coming 5th April. Okay, now if you want to know how this works, if you already know, never mind. If you don't know how this works, go to your handouts and see how we've done the first question. Let's go to the second tax year, okay? Which is something that everybody likes. Just kidding, it's something that nobody likes, okay? So let's go to the next tax year. Yeah, well, let's go to the second tax year. Now, this is the second tax year rule. To find out the basis period of the second tax year, we're using this chart. First question is, is there an accounting period? And the, I'm, I'm not gonna read any of this. I'm gonna tell you the meaning of these box. I'm not gonna read it for you. The meaning of this first box is, Okay, the meaning of the first box, I'll tell you what the meaning of the first box is, okay? This particular box, the meaning of this box, okay, what it means is, okay, for this box, it means in the question, is there, there are many accounting periods given in the question, take a look, any of those accounting periods, is it ending before the second tax year? Is it ending before the second tax year? That is, the second tax year ending, whichever date it is, is the accounting period in any, any of the accounting period in the question, is it ending before that? If your answer is yes, then next question is how long is the period of account? Okay, how long is the period of account? That is, you said yes using one accounting period here. Yeah? So that accounting period, how long is it? Is it 12 months or more or is it less than 12 months? 
So if it is 12 months, it comes in this category. Okay, students usually take it in this category. So if it's 12 months or more, what happens? If it is 12 months or more, take the last date of that and go backward by 12 months. Backward 12 months. I'm going to write there backward 12 months. And what about the case if it is less than 12 months? Forward by 12 months. Take the start of that account period and go forward by 12 months. That is if it, if it is yes. Now, if the answer is no, that means the answer is from 6th April of the second tax year. I mean, 6th April to 5th April in the second tax year. That is the case when it is no. Now, if you know how these rules work, very good. If you know, if you want to have a proper idea of how these work, all these cases are explained in the handout question. So if you're unsure about this, the best thing you can do is go into the handout questions because there are not much, question, much questions in the, in the revision kit dealing detailly with these. You know, what if it comes for the exam, CR questions or anything like that, which have actually come up. So if you want to have a proper idea, do all those questions. Okay, you'll have a proper idea. But if you already know, then never mind. You don't have to spend time there. All right. So this is the second tax year rules. So let's come to the third tax year rule. Okay, let's come to the third tax year rule. In third tax year also, the first question you're asking is exactly the same question you're asking for the second tax year. It's exactly the same question. So over there, if the answer is yes, you follow CYB. What does it mean when you that you, you'll follow CYB? It means use CYB and find out in the third tax year which of the accounting period is matching using CYB. If the answer is no, if the answer is no, then what are you supposed to do? Choose a period of account ending in the third tax. That is, you got the answer of this first question as no. In that case, take, take a note of all the accounting periods given in the question and choose any of them which ends in the third tax, which means which ends before the third tax year ends. Choose that. And they say go back 12 months, which means take the last year and go back 12 months. That is the base period for the third tax year. Okay, so once again, I'm telling you an easy tip that will help you to solve these kind of questions re relating to accessible trading income. So accessible trading income is like one thing you need to know is whatever accounting period is given to the question, write it down roughly in the scratch pad, and then you will be able to link it. Otherwise, it will be very confusing. What all accounting period is given to the question first, write in the, in the scratch pad, and then you can go ahead with your calculations. So this is the rule for the three accounting, I mean, three tax years. So what we discuss right now is that why is this base period thing used? Basically, in all cases, we link the accounting period and the tax year by using CYB. The only two cases in which we don't do that is for the opening year and closing year. So now we discuss the opening three tax years rules. So I suggest if you're unsure about this, if these rules seem okay to you and if you want proper practice, go to your handouts and do all the questions. Spend one day or half day for that and do all the questions because it is it, the time is worth investing in because sometimes it comes up for the exam. You don't know what to do. It's not enough to do just a revision kit questions. But if you're thorough with it, you don't have to go there. All right. In your handouts, there are enough of questions that those many questions are more than enough. I mean, the ones I made you do in class. Okay. And then there is uh, the closing year rules. Let's take a look at the closing year rules. So this is the, this, this is the closing year rules. That is when the business ceases. The, for the last day, we have to apply some rules. What are the steps? First thing. So first thing, remember, if there are any overlap profits, you're supposed to reduce it in the, th in, the in this tax year. So let's look at the steps. The first step, what they say is identify the tax year and the trade ceases. That is using the date given to the question, identify the tax year. Second thing you have to do is for everything, for just the previous tax year, let's say that the trade ceases in the tax year 2020, 2021. That's the first step. Second step is for the tax year 2019, 20, you do all the calculations. Okay, do all the calculations. Third step is all the profits after 2019 20 tax year you have to put in 2020 21. Okay, that is the third step. All right, and after that, you can reduce the overlap profits. So, closing year rules are very rarely tested, but I'll tell you two questions which you can do to uh, understand to help you know whether you are good at these questions. So, question number 66 of your revision kit. Please do that if you want to know the closing year rules. So these are the rules with regards to the starting and the uh, clo closing. So accessible trading income is a very small chapter. There is one more point which I would like to uh, mention to you, which is quite important. Now, this point which I want to emphasize was with regards to a point called choice of accounting date. That is, you know, if you are going to start a business, how do you decide what tax or uh, what accounting date should you choose year ended 31st April 2000? Yeah, I mean, you should, should you choose year ended 31st March or year ended 30th September or year ended 30th, 31st December? How do you choose? So there are some points which are very important with regards to this. I will show you what those points are. So if you feel like your profits will rise, 
you, you feel like your profits are going to rise you know like you, when the start of the tax you feel that as the months pass by profits are going to rise in such a case it is better to choose an an early end date like 30th april like you year and a 30th april because then you know you will actually give yourself more time to pay those taxes it's like you know mostly we take from the start of the trade to the coming 5th april and all that right from then the first 12 months so when you think about the first 12 months then the early years will be lesser profits you know so that's why if you feel like your profits are expected to rise yeah the point that the point that you need to keep notice choose an early date in the tax year then 30th april date is good as in the year and the 30th april is a good day to choose why because more time between earning profits and paying the tax there is more time between earning the profits and paying the tax then it is better to have an early idea of profits before the tax year ends it makes your planning much more easier and 31st march 5th april is actually a very straightforward date because it avoids overlap profits okay it actually avoids your overlap profits a 31st march or 5th april ending date it avoids overlap profits so keep these points in mind sometimes it comes up as theory areas and also from the this chapter uh we need to quickly understand that they are asking you with regards to this chapter like when they ask us to link accounting years to they are asking us uh just show the profits as simple in the tax years 2017 18 19 19 like that when they tell us like that we have an idea that oh they are talking about this chapter all right so that's all about this chapter the main things are opening year 3 to uh, 3 tax years rule closing year rules uh, and choice of an accounting date